Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a simple vegan Chinese rice soup breakfast, the corn and spinach porridge. It is a great way to start your morning with a warm bowl of porridge in this cold season. It is not only tasty, but also super healthy and full with energy. Check it out. Hi friends, this is Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling is my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, I also make video talking about food knowledge and the history background of the dish on this channel. So if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. When it comes to breakfast, what is the first thing you think about? Pancake? Cereal? Bagel? Or maybe a sandwich? I mean, it does sound pretty good most of the time, but in this super cold winter, when you finally use your willpower to get out of your cozy and warm bed, a ice cold milk with cereal doesn't really sound that good, isn't it? Today, I'm gonna introduce you to a Chinese breakfast choice, the rice porridge for breakfast. If you think having rice for breakfast is weird, that's totally normal. Because that's the exact same feeling that I have to see people having a sweet waffle for breakfast. It's definitely a bit of a culture shock for sure. But trust me, having a warm bowl of rice soup in the morning is really the best thing ever in the winter. It'll not only warm you up, but also provide enough carb and energy for you to start your day. And in today's recipe, I'm also gonna add in the whole corn and spinach so it's extra nutritional. Cooking a porridge is not the hardest thing in the world, but today I'm gonna teach you a trick to shorten the cooking time from an hour to 15 minutes and create the best result with the detailed recipe. With that being said, let's take a look at our ingredients today, shall we? Here's our main ingredient that we'll need for today's corn and spinach porgy. First, we'll need some corns and spinach. I'm only gonna use a, maybe half or a quarter of this spinach. We don't need too much. And also, we'll need a cup of rice for four people serving and some dry radish. And besides these, the rest of the ingredients and the exact amount will be listed in the description box down below. Cooking a rice porridge normally takes around one hour at least. Because in order to cook out the rice oil and break the inner structure of the rice, you need to give it some time. The main reason why it takes so long is because the inner structure of the rice is really tight and it is not easy to break through with boiling water. But there's one very simple step you can do that will shorten your cooking time into 15 minutes instead and still have the same if not better result. That's simply freezing your rice a night before in your freezer. Or if you cook porridge a lot, you can always keep a bag of frozen rice in your freezer, just like me. And here is how you do it. Depending on the portion you need, normally one cup of rice can cook into four servings of congee. And in my household, there's only me and my husband, Dan, but I always like to cook a little bit more and put it in the fridge or bring it as a lunch for Dan the second day. So I'll cook one cup today. Scoop out the rice and wash them well in the sink. This washing process is very important because it's not only cleaning the rice, but also give the rice some moisture. Freezing the raw rice have been soaked in water will destroy the inner structure of the rice inside. And after the structure of the rice is broken, when you cook it the second day, you don't need to cook for so long to break the structure with the heat. Washing can give it a similar result, but if you have time, soaking it for around five minutes before freezing will be the best. Now after the rice is soaked, I'm gonna drain out the water and put this into a zipper bag and put it in the freezer. I already pre-froze some rice yesterday and I'm gonna use that. Now we got our rice, let's prepare our veggie. When I buy the corn in the market, I like to get the one with its husk still on. First is because in most cases, the non-chalk corn are packageless, so it is more eco-friendly. And the second thing, which is the most important thing, is that the husk is actually a great ingredient to make vegan broth. Today, we're gonna use both corn and the husk to cook the broth for our congee. First, you wanna peel off the outer surface of the husk on your corn if you have a whole corn. Mine is like half pre-peeled, so I'm only gonna take out a few layer. The reason why we wanna do this is because the outer layer of the husk might contain some dirt or germs from the customer's hand in the supermarket, but also they might contain more pesticides. Now, after you throw away the outer husk, you can shuck the corn on a cup. 
I like to get rid of the silk as much as I can before I put it into the broth because it doesn't have much flavor to provide and it might ruin the texture of the congee. Now when that's done, chop your corn into four. I have already prepared some boiling water for our congee. The amount of water you want, it depends on the amount of rice that you're cooking today. Depending on the thickness of the congee you prefer, you can adjust the amount of water you use. I prefer one cup of rice to nine cups of water. If you want it to be a little thicker, you can use eight cups. Or if you like more of a soup texture, you can use 10 cups. As soon as the water starts boiling, we'll add in our corn and the clean husk. Cover it up so the water doesn't evaporate and let it boil for 15 minutes. In the meantime, we'll wash our spinach and chop them into small shreds. Set it aside. Now, 15 minutes has passed. Take out the corn and toss out the husk. And now you can throw in your frozen rice as well as a dry radish. If you can separate your rice before you throw it into the broth, that's great. But if not, you can use a spatula to mix it out real quick so it will separate it faster. Now, cover it up with the lid. As soon as the water starts boiling again, set a timer for 10 minutes. Adding dry radish into the congee can not only provide a little crunchy texture, but also give it a more savory taste. But if you don't have it, it's totally skippable. Now our corn on the cob has cooled down a little. Let's chop up the corn and as soon as 10 minutes has passed, toss the corn back into the pot and let it cook for another five minutes. When the time's up, open up the lid and add in some salt and pepper right away. Now use a wix to beat the broth real quick. This step can really break the rice and mix the broth, rice, as well as the seasoning well together to increase the smoothness and the fineness of the porridge. And also earlier when you toss in the chopped corn, it might still have some remains sticking together. Using a whisk can beat that open as well. When you're done, in the last step, add in our spinach and let it cook for 30 seconds. Keep on stirring because the rice oil is all cooked out already at this point, so it's easier to stock in the bottom. Now, when that's done, turn up the heat, add in some sesame oil, and done! The vegan corn and spinach porridge is ready. Ooh, look at this. A great bowl of porridge will have to be like this. Smooth and gooey. With an amount of water I'm using today, you can see both broth and the rice. When we're making the vegan broth for this congee, you can already smell the corn aroma around the whole house. The porridge is mainly savory, but with some corn sweetness. I like to sometimes have a bowl of vegan congee in the morning to warm me up and wake me up. Now, while we're enjoying this warm bowl of happiness in this cold winter, mm. let's learn some Chinese. The word of the day today is yu mi bo cai zhou, the corn and spinach kanji. The first two character yu mi means corn, and the third and fourth character bo cai means spinach. And the last character we learned before, zhou, it means kanji or porridge. So yu mi bo cai zhou is corn and spinach porridge. Thank you for cooking with me to the end. Let me know if you like this recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make video on YouTube every Monday and Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!